Hi everyone, thanks for watching Access Hockey MI. Last week we recapped our opinions and kind of how we took the 2020 entry level draft for the NHL. And so we're going to start kind of going down the list of all the guys that the Red Wings um, picked up. And today we're going to talk about Raymond and Volander. Yeah, nice, short, sweet, nice. to the point. Let's go. <laughs> Everyone knows Lucas Raymond was picked first yes. by the Red Wings. And, and as a overall. side note, <laughs> and she, I, I get into it. She I'm sorry. Me. As a side note, we did do a more in depth video on Raymond. Um, I was getting to that. before the draft, but we wanted to quick touch on him and then mostly talk about Volunteer. She's basically bragging that we. Were I'm right. basically just doing an intro after I said I was done with the intro. So <laughs> let's keep going. You didn't get out of that easy, did you? <laughs> So the biggest deal with him is the Red Wings said that he carries the puck very well. So we're going to just spend a little bit of time on him because everyone knows we love Raymond already. Raymond's great. <gasps> that was kind of a play on the, the show. Oh! <laughs> get it? Everybody loves Raymond. I didn't get it. I oh, hope you guys well, did. I hope you guys got it because I feel stupid now. <laughs> <laughs> so he's really good at carrying the puck and making plays. That's kind of the big deal with him. He's a very forward thinker. No pun intended because he's a forward. Oh, um, man, on a roll. <laughs> I know. That's going to be a great one. Um, so with that, you know, the puck touches his stick and he knows what to do with it. And we've talked about it before, his high hockey sense. That was the big thing that they were looking for with him. And that's exactly what they're going to get out of him. Yeah. And because Raymond is such a great player, he also pushes everyone around him to be a better player as well. And something that's great about him, I don't know if you mentioned it already, but the staff of the Red Wings have said that there's, there's no glaring weakness about mm, Raymond. Yeah. And so that's a huge deal for the staff to already think that. So he's playing in the highest tier right now of the Swedish Hockey League, which it would be in Frölunda. And so he's playing with them right now, and that's only going to make him better. Mm -hmm. And so we're just happy that he's able to play. And I'm sure the brass of the Red Wings are happy he's able to get play in and to get super great experience mm -hmm. in European hockey, which we love in the Swedish <laughs> Hockey League, <laughs> as you know. The next guy on our list was picked second round, 32nd overall, um, and it's William Volander. He's nice. a defenseman, mm -hmm. um, young kid. He got promoted to Allsvenskan. He's 18 years old, so he got promoted to Allsvenskan last season, which is a second-tier SHL team, so yes. kind of like the AHL affiliate, essentially, is what that is. He did really well, um, obviously earning that promotion, and he is with them right now. With that, his size and mobility are the things that are going to really drive him forward in that league, and that is what Iserman and the whole scouting staff really noticed about him, that being a big boy, I think 6'3", 6'4", yeah. he skates really well, which yeah. is not something you see very often, especially with guys like we've had, we have Elmer Soderblom, which we've talked mm -hmm. about before, where they're the bigger dudes, it takes a little bit more finesse to do what they've got to do. Right. Um, and he, he channels his power in his legs very well, and he can get on the puck very quickly, which was something that really stood out with them. Yeah, and like we said in last week's video, we didn't really get a guy except for Raymond that was under six foot tall. So Iserman and the staff are really trying to draft big, which is mm -hmm. going to be great for the NHL going forward as the... NHL, I feel like, just gets yeah. bigger and bigger. It gets and it's, big and then small and then big again. It's, yeah. it's just supposed to be that competitive, and being a bigger body in the mm -hmm. NHL is super helpful, especially on our team where I feel like we've We've in the past drafted quite a few small guys because yeah. I mean, Valeno and Zadina aren't exactly tiny guys, mm -hmm. but they're going to need some big defensemen. They're going right. to need some guys who can kind of protect them around, you know, the huge guys <laughs> that are going to take NHL. you out and you got to be able to hold your own. Yeah, so like Rachel said about um, Volander's skating ability, he does have to improve on that a little bit, mm -hmm. and that's something that the staff of the Red Wings have said. But like we've said many times before, I think that comes with the bigger guys, with the bigger skaters, and mm -hmm. that's stuff that even like weathered veterans like Dylan McElrath and Brian Lashoff, yeah. everyone has skating coaches. And I feel like even if you are a great skater, you still have a skating you coach. You should still have a skating coach. Because you're still trying yeah. to work on getting better because that's mm -hmm. kind of what the league kind of pushes you to. Right. Each league, you want to be better than where you came from. Right, and it's getting faster and faster, and we've seen that with – how the play has gone, especially from, and we've talked about it before, European hockey versus North American, mm -hmm. yada, yada, smaller ice. Yeah. So it is a faster game here, and he knows he has to work on that. That's one right. thing in the, in the interview um, that they did following the draft with him. He knows he's got to kind of focus in on that, but that is something that was a huge draw to them right. um, was his skating. So that's great. that he, It's already a very good point for him, but he knows he can get better, which is awesome. Yeah. Um, another thing that the team pointed out is that he's – He's a pretty simple guy. Um, being a D, you know, he's not flashy. He's not fancy right. or anything like that. He knows where to move the puck. And Eiserman said that he moves the puck forward. He had a lot of footage to watch mm -hmm. on him um, where he's really good at getting that puck where it needs to be. And I think that's similar to Moritz Sider, who yeah. we got in last year's draft 2019. And I think that that's a really encouraging thing because mm -hmm. too often – 
a defenseman, I think, can get caught up in the rush where uh, Moritz Sider, of course, he can get in the rush and right. come back to protect. As if good. he can do it, go for it. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. uh, the better you get, the more chance that you have to do that. So if Volander can be anything like that and keep his game simple, mm-hmm. make sure he just gets his job done, which is right. blue line, you know, and getting in those rushes, making mm-hmm. intense hits, being good at the boards, yep. too. That kind of stuff is really going to put him in a good running right. for the guys that we've got coming and up and when, competitive. Yeah, and know when to pull it back, though, too. Yeah. And I think that's, especially for the younger guys, when they're trying to make an impact, obviously that's big yeah. for them. They're drafted. They're in the pros. They want to make a good impression. Right. Um, but I think it can happen where they get almost caught up in Or where they try to do too much. Like yeah. Everybody on the ice has their job, and yeah. if they try to do too much, try to do mm-hmm. the forward's job, you've seen it before where – the net maybe gets too um, too close in the net with so yeah. many guys, and then the goalie can't do his job. It gets yeah, there's like six guys in the crease. Yeah, so, so it's just it? if you don't play your game, mm-hmm. then you're gonna sometimes yeah. make mistakes. So if you if you have your your game down and your defense mm-hmm. down, which I'm thinking that he will in Europe have a lot of good yes. opportunity. Yep. and I'm so glad that they have a chance to play right now. I know, I know, it's, it's super it's great. It's kind of a drag, and, and with. Iserman and Draper, considering that those have been the two major mouthpieces for Detroit after all this, that's one thing that they keep, they don't want to put a timeline on when are these guys going to get pulled over, when are they going to be ready for they the really NHL. They really can't, and I feel bad for yeah. them not being able to know. Yeah, I feel like they don't know. Iserman even said that if the NHL does come back, he's not going to put a timeline on Raymond or Volander or any of the other guys that we got just because he wants to pull them when they are ready, not when the season's ready. Well, and they're doing good. And they're doing good being able to play. So um, in our analysis, we kind of want to break down kind of the developmental path that we see for both of them and maybe some roadblocks. So what do you kind of think for both of their developmental paths? I think Raymond, of course, is going to be one of the quicker ones, Um, much like Sider was uh, last season. If the NHL picks up, he's probably going to be, I won't say a shoe in because things could change. And I don't think you're, you're saying he would be NHL right away? I, I'm saying there's a good chance he could be. Interesting. Um, not this season, <laughs> not this season though. So if this season comes back, I don't think that these guys are, especially in this case, Raymond is just going to get thrown into the NHL. Um, I think he's got the ability to, but I think the team's going to put him, you know, just let him complete a season, see yeah. how he goes for an entire season with Frolunda. Because remember last season, he did not get a ton of minutes with Frolunda. So they're yeah. going to want to see his longevity and how much action he can actually take. Yeah. And same with Volander. You know, he's in second tier, which is incredible, but they're going to want to see consistent production and yeah. consistent growth. So I think, you know, for Raymond, maybe the 2020 one, one maybe, maybe 2021 this year's so confusing yes it is. <laughs> the 21 season uh, I think realistically that's when we'll see him over in the states and Volander you know it could be two three seasons yeah and I actually I think Volander could be a little quicker um but then again it is really hard knowing right now with how everything has been going so I think that like Rachel said I think I think what we know right now is they're going to be in Europe for quite a while and that there's, that is a fact <laughs> and that there's no rush really to get them back right now mm-hmm. seeing as there's no concrete plan on when they're coming back or when anything's going to happen so I do think their developmental paths are going to be good though like Mm -hmm. we said they're in good hands they're not and I don't think anyone's worried about them like not developing because they're going to develop um but I just think and like um many of other of the other guys who have been signed um or like loaned over to Mm -hmm. Europe right now I'm just glad that they're all playing right and that's super great so Roadblocks to us would kind of look like other players that they're battling positions for. Mm-hmm. I think Raymond is going to have a spotlight on him because the first rounder always does. Spotlight or target, however you want to say Yeah, it. right. <laughs> and the first rounder always does, and you always expect really big things from mm-hmm. him. So I'm looking forward to see kind of how I think that's going to make um, current forwards who are trying yeah. to earn a spot work a little harder to get the spotlight mm-hmm. back on them because you always watch the first rounder of the recent draft. So I think yeah. like guys like Philip Zadina has to have a really good season. Mm-hmm. I think that Joe Valeno could afford a really, really good season. <laughs> um, so I think that it's just going to push the other guys mm-hmm. who are already in the system to yeah. be a lot better because these two guys aren't going to have a problem with producing yeah. and being good. And being that they're in different positions too is kind of fun to see what players they're really butting up against right. because Iserman wanted to create that high competition, which he did. Yeah. And it's awesome to see. So as far as defense goes, Moritz Sider obviously has done very well for himself. He's so going to be NHL, guys. He'll be fine. So he's <laughs> he'll over in Sweden right now, probably tearing it up. And yep. so, you know, he's, I think, going to push Volander in a good direction. Like, this yeah. is what I want to achieve. Mm-hmm. On the flip side of thing, I, uh, things, I think there's a couple defensemen that might be kind of having I think our defense, a Red Wings and Griffin's defense, is pretty shaky. So it I is. think that that's a really yeah. good position right now for guys to be vying for. Yeah, and I, the, the name that comes to mind is Dennis Chalowski. 
We already did a video Give him on the him. jump. <laughs> the, <laughs> yeah, that was flattering, I'm sure. But with him, I think he should be a little nervous being that it's his final year of his entry contract and he, yes. he's got this kid coming in. He's not an AHL yet, but by the time well, you're done, you've, you've already got done. Lawrence Sider who's already going to surpass him and it's right. going to be his, he's right now playing his second yeah. season. So there's some over pushing on both sides, right. which is really cool to see right. from the defense. So that's what we think about Lucas Raymond and William Volander. So let us know what you think in the comments below about these two picks in particular. Shout out to our Swedish followers. Yes. <laughs> Shout out to you guys. We are part Swedish. Yeah, so don't want to brag, but yeah, it's pretty cool. We're but bragging. yeah, let us know in the comments what you think about these two guys and kind of what you're looking forward to. If you've watched any of the games um, that our Red Wings and Griffins players have been in currently, let us know kind of how they're doing and if you've seen them and what you think of them and how great they are. <laughs> um, and we will see you guys next time. Thanks so much for watching. Bye, guys.